The 1988 Rams forcefully rebounded from a disappointing 1987 campaign. Last year was an aberration from what we think of ourselves as being. And I think each fan on our football team at the end of last year kind of sat back and said, this is not much fun. Everybody had like a cloud that hung over them. Uh, during the offseason, everybody worked hard. I spent a lot of time in Los Angeles working also. And uh, you could just see that cloud move away. Spirits picked up. The biggest change is the attitude. And, uh, and it's a lot more fun to be around a lot of people with a great attitude. Our team is back together again. You know, we tend now that we're somewhat removed from last year to look at our situation over a five-year period. Four of those five years, we had a football team that was together, played together, and, uh, and succeeded. This renewed sense of togetherness was at its strongest on the season's final week, when the Rams needed to beat San Francisco in order to clinch a wild card berth. In a must-win situation, the Rams dominated and devastated the eventual world champions. A 38-16 triumph symbolized the spirit of the 1988 Rams, a team that rewrote their record book while carving another exciting chapter in franchise history. With this decisive victory, the Rams ensured themselves of their fifth playoff berth in the last six years, and they climaxed a season that was like a best-selling novel. Entertaining, dramatic, and filled with an unforgettable cast of characters. A season that was truly one for the books. Good afternoon, everyone. We're at the Metrodome in Minnesota. It is snowing outside. It is very comfortable inside, however. And the Rams and the Vikings hook up in this NFC wildcard game this afternoon. Three weeks ago, not many people gave the Rams much of a chance of being in any sort of a playoff picture. They won three in a row. Their most recent, a win over the San Francisco 49ers, gave them a record of 10 and 6, and so they come in here against the Vikings with a chance to proceed. In the NFC wildcard contest, the Rams were unable to overcome a hostile environment and their own mistakes. Despite a pair of Jim Everett scoring passes, the Rams eventually fell 28 to 17. But while this defeat closed the book on the Rams, it was less an unhappy ending than it was a postscript. A postscript to a thrilling season that began in a big way. Chapter one was set in Green Bay, where the Rams supplied plenty of exclamation points to their 1988 debut by beating the Packers 34 to seven. Back to throw, Everett swings it out to the right to Greg Bell, bobbling as he goes in for the touchdown at the corner. Randy Wright, quick pump, fires to the outside, picked off by Jerry Gray, and he's going to go for the touchdown to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, Jerry Gray. For week two's home opener in Anaheim, the Rams rolled out the welcome mat, then rolled over the Detroit Lions. Yes! Come on, Tony! Let's go, Five sacks and a Jim Ever touchdown pass to Damone Johnson highlighted a 17 to 10 victory. Week three found the Rams continuing in the fast lane and at the Los Angeles Coliseum, they were securely in the driver's seat as they accelerated past the Raiders, 22 to 17. Ever to throw on third down and nine, rolls out of the pocket to the right side, sets and throws deep and down the middle for Aaron Cox, caught for the touchdown. Out of the shotgun, Berline takes a long snap, steps into the end zone, tries to get out. He is tripped up and is sacked in the end zone, a safety. The Rams remained in high gear when they traveled to the Meadowlands for a confrontation with the New York Giants. Well, Max, so there are no side adjusts. No side adjusts on Max. Take off, no. No side adjusts on Max. Everett sprints left, sets the throw, fires up and out to the left, the hand completed the 10, down to the 5, and in for the touchdown. Everett back to throw, looking, firing out of the left flat, wide open to Delfino, in for the touchdown. Yeah! The Giants were thwarted by hard hitting and heads up defensive play. And 
Jim Everett would tie a team's single game record by throwing five touchdown passes. At the 40, 35, 25, down to the 15, to the 10, the 5, and a touchdown. What a play by the rookie from Arizona State. Everett's 41-yard hookup with Henry Ellard iced a 45-31 win. This contest provided persuasive evidence that the Rams boast one of the NFL's most exciting young passing talents. Well, like we had to take 1988 saw Jim Everett emerge as the master of the Rams' multi-dimensional offensive system. When we hired Ernie Zampezi as our offensive coordinator and changed our passing game, uh, Jim had to relearn a whole new system that was quite foreign to him. And he's learning that well, and he has the knowledge and the intelligence to understand it. But I think he has natural leadership qualities, and he likes to play. He loves playing football. Everett's love of the game is evidenced by the heart that makes him a tough competitor. And the heat he applies to a forward pass. In only his second full season as an NFL starter, Everett set team single season records for attempts and completions, while establishing another standard by passing for 3,964 yards. Back to throw, Everett spreading out right to set and throw, and is gonna fire deep, he has Cox, and it is caught for the touchdown! That's a lot of fun, this, this offense is a blast to run in, and when it's working, um, it, it can be dynamic. This dynamic offense was ignited by Everett's explosive right arm. Everett's 31 touchdown passes were a league high and accounted for yet another team standard. Jim Everett's impressive performance throughout 1988 secured him a place in the Rams record book and in the pantheon of contemporary pro quarterbacks. Georgia Frontieri's 10 years as owner and president of the Rams comprise a decade of distinction. She has set the tone for one of pro football's classiest and most successful organizations. She epitomizes hands-on ownership in the truest sense of the term, and her involvement in every phase of the club's operation has produced a team that is consistently competitive. Her coach, John Robinson, is both consistent and competitive. from everything. We're about that far away. A shutout over the Falcons in week six showcased Robinson's coaching philosophy at its very best. With a season-high 155 rushing yards, Greg Bell embodied the emphasis on ball control that is Robinson's trademark. And Jim Everett's three touchdown passes, one of them a 54-yarder to Henry Ellard, demonstrated the Rams' success in establishing a more wide-open passing game. A 33 to nothing victory was further propelled by a pass rush that produced nine sacks. Defense has long been a Rams strength, but in 1988, Robinson wanted his unit to become more aggressive and attack oriented. We are playing much more uh, aggressive style of defense. We're coming after people maybe gambling a little more. We have now tried to use our our outside linebackers as the focal point of what we're doing, particularly as it relates to pass rush. By unleashing athletes such as Mike Wilcher, the Rams topped the NFL with 56 sacks. Mel Owens, number 58, Kevin Green, and rookie Brent Farinay's number 51 all thrived in the new defensive scheme. 99.9% .9 of the time, we're just rushing on the corners. So it's a pretty simple defense, just uh, get the guy with the football. It turns us loose and, you know, we're all drooling and slobbering at the mouth and uh, we're on and coming and uh, I like it. Kevin is a wide-eyed, wild man who just exudes uh, passion for playing this game. When you see Kevin out there, he's just having fun playing. I, I, I just uh, love the attitude that he brings to us. 
This fourth-year pro has developed into one of the game's premier pass rushers, and his 16 and a half sacks were a team high for 1988. Kevin is, is one of those uh, old Rambo kinds of football players, you know, who does it with a great deal of enthusiasm and, and has, uh, has exceptional instinctive ability. Inside linebackers Larry Kelm, number 52, Carl Ecker, number 55, and rookie Fred Strickland, number 53, were also models of instinct and enthusiasm. Ecker, the team leader in total tackles, Mark Giroux and Jim Collins, number 50, were relentless run stuffers, as was defensive end Doug Reed. Other line standouts were Alvin Wright, number 99, Sean Miller, Greg Meisner, number 69, and Gary Jeter, number 77. The Rams registered a respectable 37 takeaways, thanks in large measure to a solid secondary that included Anthony Newman, number 26, Mickey Sutton, Vince Newsom, Clifford Hicks, Leroy Irvin, number 47, Johnny Johnson, James Washington, and Michael Stewart, number 23. Jerry Gray, a team leader on defense, earned his third trip to the Pro Bowl. Against Green Bay, Gray returned an interception 47 yards for the first touchdown of his four-year NFL career. The tenacity that spurred the defense was mirrored on special teams. The Rams displayed plenty of clout on coverage, thanks to Anthony Newman, number 26, Robert Del Pino, James Washington, Larry Kelm, and Michael Stewart, number 23. Clifford Hicks, Henry Ellard, and number 49, Mickey Sutton, gave the Rams a formidable trio of punt return specialists. Rejoining the team for the final seven games of the year, Ron Brown produced two kickoff returns of 70-plus yards. In addition to Brown's fleet feet, the special teams also featured the talented toes of punter Dale Hatcher and place kicker Mike Lansford, who became the club's all-time leader in points scored. When the second half of the season began at New Orleans, Lansford's four field goals accounted for all of the Rams' scoring. The defense held New Orleans to a mere 33 rushing yards, and the secondary continually frustrated the Saints' aerial attack. Lansford's 30-yard field goal in the fourth period represented the margin of victory in a 12-10 win that gave the Rams a 7-2 record and a share of first place in the NFC West. In the Rams' blueprint for a towering offense, the foundation was an offensive line that was one of the league's best at both pass protection and run blocking. Tackle Jackie Slater earned Pro Bowl honors, as did guard Tom Newberry and center Doug Smith.
Mike Shad, Tony Slayton, Robert Cox, Irv Pankey, and Duvall Love further enabled Jim Everett to engineer the NFL's third-ranked passing offense. Versatile backs Buford McGee and Robert Del Pino, a rookie, were part of a well-armed aerial arsenal. Del Pino led all of the club's running backs in receptions, and a talented tight end tandem consisting of Damone Johnson and Pete Holohan also helped the Rams score more points than any team in the NFC. The short to medium range passing game was a model of efficiency, but Ernie Zampezi had bigger things in mind. To be more productive throwing the football, we need to make some big plays. We need to get the ball up the field and, and get those 20 and 30 and 50 and 60 yard plays. We need to do that. Big plays were made by number 83, Willie Flipper Anderson and Aaron Cox, a pair of rookie wideouts with the ability to cover plenty of ground. Cox averaged over 21 yards per catch while scoring five touchdowns. But the majority of Everett's long distance calls were placed to Henry Ellard, whose outstanding ability to run after a catch netted him a league best, 1,414 receiving yards. This Pro Bowl performer led the NFC with a team record 86 receptions and scored 10 touchdowns. Also essential to any big play offense is a breakaway ball carrier. And as the Rams feature back, Greg Bell proved to be well suited for the role. Every Sunday I'm getting the ball roughly around 20 times a game. And in those 20 carries, I've got to keep this offense, you know, moving steadily down the field. I'm, I'm like the ball control back. But at any time, that inside play can be taken outside. I feel I have the speed, and I've got the little agility moves to get past the linebackers, and then it's going to be a foot race. And uh, I always think of myself 70% of the time, I'm going to win those with no problem. Bell burst out of the starting blocks early in 1988, producing four 100 yards plus rushing performances in the season's first six games. went on to gain 1,212 yards, and he was pro football's most prolific touchdown maker with 18 scores. <music> Bell and Ellard were instrumental in getting the Rams back on track after the team was temporarily derailed by a four-game losing streak. On a Monday night at Anaheim in week 14, Bell ran for nearly 100 yards and a touchdown against the NFC Central Division champion Chicago Bears. Ellard contributed six catches for 132 receiving yards in a tide-turning 23-3 triumph. The Rams sustained their well-choreographed style of play by next waltzing to a 22-7 win over Atlanta. Pete Holohan grabbed eight passes for 126 yards. Ellard caught a touchdown pass for the third straight week, and the Rams were ready for the final most crucial leg on their stretch run to the playoffs. Welcome to Candlestick Park in San Francisco and our broadcast of the Rams 49ers game. Can you believe it? After 15 grueling weeks, it all comes down to this one game. If the Rams win, they become the final wild card team. If they lose, it's all over. San Francisco was destined for a Super Bowl victory, but on this evening, 
Jim Everett and Damone Johnson reduce the 49ers to helpless victims in the Rams' quest to return to postseason play. Johnson would catch three touchdown passes, and Everett, who was never sacked, tossed another to Henry Eller. Rambles to the right, still fires for the end zone, and it is caught for the touchdown by Henry Eller. The defense savaged San Francisco, holding the conference's best running attack to 70 rushing yards. The Rams also recorded nine sacks, four and a half of them courtesy of Kevin Green. This contest proved that in a season in which the Rams had set new team records, they also established new standards for character and determination by rebounding from a late season slump that would have crippled most clubs. With 17 unanswered points in the second half, the Rams reeled off a 38 to 16 victory. Everett's gonna run or throw. He throws into the end zone, wide open for the touchdown to Damone Johnson. The Rams had finished with a flourish to post a 10 and six record that obliterated all traces of their 1987 campaign. Throughout 1988, they had reestablished themselves as one of pro football's best teams. With a nucleus of exciting young players, an imaginative offense, and a devastating defense, they are certain to remain on the upswing. 1988 will stand as a year in which the Rams broke team records and toppled opponents. As a result of their numerous achievements, the Los Angeles Rams made 1988 one for the books.